Hello, I'm Atubo George, and I'm so excited to be bringing you God's truth today. Praise God. Now, let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, miracles of provision is coming your way today. Now, that's what I hear from the Spirit of God. Miracles of provision is coming your way today. So what is that thing you need right now? I declare over your life that a window is opened for that blessing to come. And it will reach you. It will reach you speedily. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you because you will hold back nothing from us that is good and profitable. As we look into your truth. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. So we are looking at this story of the young prophet, and I told you from Romans, he said, these things we are written for our learning. See? So, I asked a question yesterday. So, did God kill this young prophet because he disobeyed God? No, God didn't kill him, but he died. You see, this is it. Now, you, you remember in, in the book of Malachi, God says, you have robbed me. Yes, you say, where have we represented tithe and offering? And then he now says, you are cursed with a curse, even this whole nation. Now, there are people who have used that to say, oh, if you don't tithe, God will curse you. And people go ahead to curse people with that. Now, God didn't say, I have cursed you. He said, you are in a curse. I need you to understand the difference now. See, because sometimes people don't understand this thing. So you, you see it, it, the same thing with the, in the Garden of Eden. See, people think God cursed Adam and Eve. God did not curse them. When they ate the fruit, God did not curse them. God had already told Adam, the day you eat of this fruit, you will surely die. He didn't say, I will kill you. He said, the day you eat of it, you will surely die. The reason is because the day you eat it without my instruction, I've told you that before, God didn't say, don't eat the fruit at all. He said, don't eat it except I command you to eat it. That's, that's a real thing that God said to them. So how do you know? That's why we have the Holy Spirit in us. He will tell you all truths. Praise <laughs> God. So, so don't think God put that tree there to tempt them and is watching. Let me put this tree here. I'll tell them not to. The day they eat it, I will hit them. They will know. They will understand. So this is my point of discipline for them. No, sir. God didn't put that tree to tempt them. God put that tree there for them to eat. But the eating of that tree was going to be by the word of the Lord. You see, so when they ate the tree without receiving the word of the Lord concerning it, they automatically activated a curse. So God saw this young prophet the same thing with tithing. God says, when you don't tithe, you are in a curse. Not that God will curse you. No, you are in a curse because the world itself is in darkness. Now, anything you're doing in the world is full of darkness. I mean, it's so dark that your right decisions are still in darkness. You understand what I'm saying? So, when God told this man, don't eat in that place, don't drink, don't even come, go the same way you came through. It is because God was trying to save his life from death. That's why God said, don't do this. If you don't do this, you will leave. See, if you do this, you will die. Not because if you do this, I will die. Ah, he has done it. Angels, give me a cane. Let me wipe him to death. And God flog you and you die. Say, yes. That is what I do to disobedient children. No, sir. That's not God. You see, I'll tell you something. You see this young prophet. When he saw that lion coming out, if he had cried out to the Lord, oh, but he didn't. You know why he didn't? He couldn't forgive himself. He couldn't forgive himself. 
He couldn't. He felt he has committed the unpardonable sin. So this is it. I'm done for. Nothing can ever happen right again. I'm finished. So he was just going on that journey, wondering what's going to happen, what's going to happen. So the moment he saw the lion coming out, he knew my death has come. No prayer, no command, no voice to be heard in heaven. He died. But that is not God. That's not God. That's not the way God works. See, the Bible says, Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It doesn't matter what he has done. If you will be bold enough in the day of trouble, because that's what he says, call upon me in the day of trouble and I will answer you and deliver you. Now, he didn't say what caused the trouble. You get into the day of trouble. The day of trouble may have even been your fault, but he says, call on me. But you must learn to forgive yourself, especially when you know you have done some wrong. Now, this happens every, in everything that we do. You find someone says, oh, ah, maybe something bad happened, misfortune happened, he, he was duped or something. They say, mm, I know it's because I did not pay my tithes last month. That's why this thing has happened to me. And to them, they think it's payback time. No, it's not payback time. Yes, your foolishness kept you in that place in the first, because if you, if you, if you were not wise enough to give God your tithes, see, if you were not wise enough to do it, then it means there are lots of foolishness inside of you already. I'm telling you the truth. You know, sometimes people want to compare God's children, and that's, that's the height of foolishness. Someone will say, uh, Bill Gates doesn't pay tithes, and he's so rich. The richest people in the world, they don't pay tithes. And you know, there's something the Lord told me one time. He said, before you can call a man blessed, look for his third generation. And I was like, really? <laughs> yeah. Before you can say a man is a blessed man, wait for his third generation. What do you mean his third generation? Wait for the man's children. And wait for the children's children. <laughs> Praise God. See, wait for that children's children. If you can trace the man's wisdom in his children's children, then you know this man was blessed by God. It's not every prophet of God that is blessed by God. They did the work of God, yes. They had power with God, yes. But it doesn't mean they were blessed by God. Yeah. So you see, when you see God call Abraham, when you see God say, I'm the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, that is significant. That's significant. Because every blessing that God gives, when God blesses a man, when God blesses a man, you will find the first, the first run of that blessing gets to the third generation. Now, after the third generation, oh, Learn wisdom from what I'm telling you. Learn wisdom from what I'm telling you. If God blesses you, the first effect of that blessing expires in your third generation. So a man who has walked with God, truly walked with God, he has children, you will find that blessing. See, his children will walk in that blessing. His children's children will walk in that blessing. Now, in the season of his children's children, that blessing is ought to be renewed. If the children's children don't renew that blessing for another two generations, then that blessing may, may scatter by that period. But you see, if the children's children 
remember and know the source of that blessing and hold on to it, I'll tell you what, there will never be an inheritance of theirs that you will not find or in every generation you will find a trace of that their father's blessing that, that's what i'm telling that's what i always tell people work with god with all sincerity of purpose now it doesn't matter how long jesus is going to tarry whether long or short work with god in truth in truth you see because abraham worked with god what promise did God give Abraham? Say, I will bless you and your seed. David walked with God. What did God do? God said, I will bless your seed. I will see to it that your seed remains on the throne. Now, guess what? David gave back to Solomon. Solomon enjoyed the benefit of his father's blessing. He got to his son, Rehoboam, Solomon's son, Rehoboam. And now it was time for the covenant to be renewed. But guess what? Rehoboam messed it up. He forgot about the Lord. But because of how perfectly Abraham walked with God, and God had verbally spoken those words that I will see to it that your seed is always on the throne. Now Rehoboam did not, um, did not activate the blessing for another generation. He didn't do that. But because God had promised Abraham, you know what God did? God split the kingdom into two. And the little part, he kept it for David to fulfill his word. That, that's how faithful God is. David is dead, but God was still faithful to the words he spoke to David. Even if he had to divide the kingdom, because right now, Rehoboam had messed everything up. And God's not, not going to allow the whole kingdom to be messed up. But he had made a promise to David. So what did God do? Split the kingdom, giving the most the, 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 the little parts. David still had someone on the throne. People don't know God. See, when you call righteousness, that is who he is. So when you walk before the Lord perfectly, you may not physically see today the benefit of walking with the Lord. But let me tell you the truth. Your children, you are leaving an inheritance for your children's children. Now that's what the Bible says, a good man, a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. Now that inheritance, make no mistakes about this. I've heard preachers preach this. They are a good man leaves an inheritance, so, so you better make sure you leave an inheritance. What are they talking about? Houses. Make sure you have an, have an estate that you can leave to your... That's not what the Bible meant by inheritance. Read it from the Amplified Version. It says, a good man leaves an inheritance of moral stability and goodness for his children's children. That's what Abraham left for his children's children. See, that's what David left for his children's children. David took time to teach his son Solomon. Now, when you read the book of Proverbs from chapter 1 to, I think, chapter 8, eight or chapter nine those were the words of david to solomon so chapter the book of proverbs from chapter one to chapter eight or nine solomon was just giving us the notes of his father's teachings before he now started telling you his own wisdom so david took time to teach so the inheritance is not the throne that he gave to Solomon. It is those teachings that he gave to him. Solomon, this is your father's God. Know him. Same thing Abraham taught his children. Oh, Mashu Brakitala Kabashatala. See, God is merciful. But people don't know him. So, because they make mistakes. They think they are done for. They, do, they don't think God will ever forgive. Because, I mean, God told me clearly. God told me I, I shouldn't eat. I went to eat. I let that man deceive me. Now, I'm finished. But not David. David was told, oh, because you have done this. The matter of Uzziah. Oh, this is what's going to happen. David said, I've heard. He turned to the Lord and he began to cry to the Lord for mercy. And God showed him mercy. 
showed him mercy that that prophecy from the man of God that he came to give to David by the word of the Lord did not come to pass as the prophet said. God, that's another day's talk. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we bless you for your truth that has been unveiled in our hearts. You are God. You are love. And we see you that way. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.